The purpose of this video is to show you how to conduct a 2x2 two two Pearson chi-square analysis in SPSS. The example data set I have here are based on the results associated with Geschwind's classic study on the relationship between handedness and dyslexia. So I've got two variables, handedness in one column and dyslexia in the other column. And the question is, is there a relationship between the two? Or stated alternatively, is the percentage of people who have dyslexia greater amongst left-handers than right-handers? So to perform the analysis, click on Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Crosstabs, and you can put handedness in the row box and dyslexia in the columns. You don't have to do that. You could switch it around. You'll get the same result. You'll also want to click on Statistics because you need to get the chi-square statistic. There are a number of other options here, but they're not relevant to this analysis. Click Continue. And then we need to click on Cells. You don't have to, but I did in the textbook because you're going to get some information that is useful to inspect. So click on Expected because this is going to give me the expected cell frequency values and also click on rows because that's going to give me the percentages to help me interpret the result from an intuitive perspective. Now you do have the option to click on columns and total percentages but if you click on any more than one of these options I find the table gets too busy and it's difficult to interpret. So row is probably going to be your best option most of the time but sometimes you might want to interpret it from the context of the column and so you would choose that option. Click continue and click OK. So the first table is really just telling us the sample size and whether there are any missing values or not. And the sample size is 250 and there are no missing values. Next, I get the table of results associated with the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies as well as the percentages. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit by stretching out the table so that the within handedness percentage row is actually just one space. So in this case, we've already seen the observed frequencies in the textbook. So 223 did not have dyslexia and were right-handed. So that's by far the most frequently observed cell frequency. Most people are right-handed and they do not have dyslexia. So that's 223 out of the 250 total count. And here is probably the key level of the matchup here. We have the 2.2% of people who were diagnosed with dyslexia, yes, and they're right-handed. So we've got right-handed there. And then we have this comparative percentage of 22.7% who are, yes, dyslexic and left-handed. So that's a way to present the key comparison here, which is 2.2% versus 22.7%. Is that statistically significantly different? That difference between those two percentages? It could happen by chance, but what, are, what is the probability of having obtained something like that or more extreme just by chance under the assumption that there actually is no relationship between these two variables? Well, we can consult the chi-square test. And we have here, let me just again stretch this out so that it's all on one row. We have the Pearson chi-square value, which is 22.032. And with one degree of freedom, it's a P of less than 0 0.001. I could find what that P value is if I wanted to push it out. Let's just see if it's beyond even 10 points or 12. Ah, there we go. We start to see what the P value is if we move it out to several decimal places. But in uh, practice, we would just say p less than 0 0.001. So it's a statistically significant effect. We can say that the difference between 22.7 and 22.2% is statistically significant based on the Pearson chi-square value. Now, I do want to point out the expected cell frequencies here because the chi-square test table has a comment here which says one cells, 25%, have expected count less than five the minimum expected count is actually 0.88. And what it's referring to there is one of the cells actually has an expected cell frequency that is less than one. 
it's less than 1, it's even less than 5. And so when I push that out, it's actually 0.88. And that is less than what SBSS is concerned about, which is 5. And as I write in the textbook, there are people who say that the minimum expected cell frequency you need to see is 5, but that is really not true. It's not even close to true. The research has shown that closer to 1, between 1 and 2 is actually acceptable so long as the sample size is over 10. If you were concerned that the expected cell frequency for one of your cells is less than 1, and you should be, you can consult the Fisher's exact test which gives you a p-value of 0 0.001. So this p-value is protecting, this analysis protects us against making a bad decision about the null hypothesis and to reject it when our expect, one of the expected cell frequencies is less than one. And you, you could have more than one cell frequency with less than one, but in this case it's just one. So I would be a little bit concerned and so I would corroborate the result by an examination of the Fisher, Fisher's exact test. And it's still less than 0 0.05. And so I would conclude that the null hypothesis of no difference between right and left-handers with respect to the observation of dyslexia is rejected. There does appear to be a difference.